Atheist Nomads episode 94. News for May 14, 2015. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low price, full featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A R C H W A Y hosting.com. Hey, we're also brought to you by listeners just like you. Find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash atheist nomads. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash atheist nomads. As a concerned parent of the uh, free thought community, I want to advise uh, atheist nomad listeners that this is an adult show. There will be things discussed, talked about, topics that may be inappropriate for children under the age of 25, 40. 26, 27, yeah. 40. <laughs> We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. This is episode number 94. I am Dustin, and joining me as always is Wesley. Hey there, how's it going? Going good, going good. Yeah, we had uh, just last week the National Day of Reason, and in Boise, as uh, mentioned, it was on the Idaho State Capitol steps, and those of you listening in the podcast feed would have already seen the audio from the event uh, show up. So uh, the rest of you, you can go to atheistnomads.com slash N-D-O-R, and that will take you to the audio uh, with some notes, or you can also watch the video on YouTube. Just go to our, our YouTube channel. So give me the the quick version. Was it fun? Was it good? It was a blast. Uh, we there, there was about 40, 50 people in attendance. Uh, nice. We had a, a great lineup of speakers, and it was raining. Well, uh, hey, you know that that's that's some testament if you got people sticking around in the fucking rain. Yeah, yeah. There was a little bit of confusion at the beginning from some would be theocrats that hmm. thought we were them, and no, no. <laughs> Your group's on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was good. Yeah. We we had uh, one of the speakers was from the, the Secular Student Alliance. He talked about uh, secular youth. Uh, we had the uh, local rabbi speak, mm-hmm. Rabbi Dan Fink. Um, Susan Harrington, who we will have on an upcoming episode from Idaho Atheists, uh, spoke as well. And... Uh, after her, we had Jeff Schroeder, who is an open atheist. His license plate is atheist, and he's a member of the Mountain Home City Council. Uh huh. So that was that was cool. He's uh, d- done his part to try to prove that yeah, there are atheists in Foxhole. He's, he's an Army veteran, and that nice. you can get elected as an open atheist, even as a Republican in Idaho. And then our our. Uh, Keynote was from Richard Carrier about Sharia in America. Uh, so he's saying that it's real, obviously. He's saying that blue laws <laughs> uh, prohibiting alcohol sales at certain times, any kind of forcing your religious morals on others through the legislative process is Sharia. Okay. So these people that are so concerned about Muslim Sharia law coming, they're doing their own. Getting Christian Sharia. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, uh, one unfortunate thing was the video wasn't on until the break. So the oh, first no. three speakers, myself included, were missed in the video. Oh, shit. Van from uh, Humanists of Idaho snapped about three minutes of footage of me. Yeah. And so I put together some graphics to go with the audio for those for, for YouTube. Uh, cool, but you get cool. to see everything for the rest. Anyway, rather than bore everybody on the details, how have you been? Well, Sam and Becky from Mask and Atheist came up and visited me and my local peoples, and we nice. uh, had a good old time drinking whole bunches of beer on Mother's Day, because, well, me and Meredith are, well, you know, don't have mothers anymore, so, you know, we visited her mom's uh, gravesite and brought some flowers, and then we went drinking. Not truly cool. really to drink our our tears away or anything but you know just yeah be with friends and have a good day yeah yeah so yeah that's pretty much all we did this weekend cool yeah all right we got a announcement from the tri-city 
Freethinkers. In oh, southeastern yeah. Washington next month, the Tri-City Freethinkers will host special guest Greta Christina, the well-known author and public speaker on atheism, sexuality, sex positivity, LGBT issues, politics, and culture. Greta will discuss what the atheist movement can learn from the LGBT movement, including its focus on coming out of the closet. This event is part of the week-long Mid-Columbia Pride activities. The event will take place on Tuesday, June 16 at 6 p.m. at the Shiloh Inn International Ballroom located on 50 Comstock Street in Richland. Admission is free and open to the public. For more information about the Tri-City Freethinkers, visit tricityfreethinkers.org or find them on Facebook. And definitely want to give uh, Jennifer Goulet, the president of the Tri-City Freethinkers, a shout out. And thanks for passing the message to us. Yeah. And uh, Stephanie Gatormson from episode 71 has been slapped with a lawsuit from a faith healer that she's called out. And so obviously that's going to be expensive to fight. Uh, It's a bullshit, frivolous case. Uh, He claimed that she violated his copyright and engaged in defamation by calling him a fraud. She did a standard YouTube video breakdown and, you know, took his video chunk by chunk and, said why all that was bullshit Mm -hmm. because it is yeah so you can find the video that led to all of this and uh, or a link you can find a link to the video that led to all of this and the ability to help her at gofundme.com slash srg legal fund because yeah she has to get a lawyer well she got a lawyer uh and needs to fight this and it costs money now, she's oh, yeah. already up to over seventeen thousand dollars, but Holy she shit. needs. Nice. But yeah, she's trying that's, to raise uh, seventy five thousand. Man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know she's got some some big names backing her, but you know she, can, you know she can use all the help you can get. Yeah, five thousand of that was from Penn Yeah, fuck it, and she works for Richard Dawkins, doesn't she? Yeah, for the RDF Foundation. Uh huh. I hope he he came through a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we'd hope. Now, alrighty, well, what do you have for us for history? This day in history, May 14th, the year 1796. Jenner tests the smallpox vaccine. So, got this old country doctor, Edward Jenner. He lived in Gloucestershire, England. I think I fucking nailed that. I highly uh, doubt it. <laughs> Gloucestershire. Probably Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire. Fuck you. He became obsessed with uh, local tales of mi- milkmaids not getting, you know, the really terrible smallpox. Um, and it was on this day that Jenner began the cruel human experimentation on poor little James Phipps. Uh, Jenner collected the cowpox infection, sore, fluid, juice, pus, whatever you want to call it, from the hand of Sarah or Lucy Nelms. Uh, not really clear on that. He then made a couple small cuts on little James and uh, rubbed that infection, sore, fluid, juice, pus into those cuts. And, you know, <laughs> Jenner was really methodical about it and uh, kept a, a log of all all that was going on and over the next uh nine or ten days um poor little james you know he he was feeling pretty shitty but you know he came through it had you know got the little cowpox bump and it looked really gross but he got better and then well (laughs) jenner started fucking uh implanting actual smallpox into the kid and when i say you know, poor little James. I'm talking about little eight year old kid. Mm-hmm. Now, to to be fair, there was a smallpox outbreak in this town. Oh, there was smallpox everywhere. Shit. But it's, like, it's, there was an active outbreak going on right there. So this kid was at severe risk of catching it and dying from it. Yeah. So this, yeah, kind of brutal testing, but also, uh, if he didn't do anything, fire. the kid probably would have died. Yeah. Fair enough, uh, but uh, yeah, kind of gross. Uh, but anyways, uh, it, uh, over like 20 different times, Jenner tried to infect the kid with uh, smallpox, you know, making little cuts and, and rubbing smallpox and infected, 
material into the kid, which uh, still really fucking gross to think about. But yeah, uh, little James never got sick. So um, Jenner definitely wasn't the first to actually do this. There was a at least a German family uh, a few years before that uh, did the same thing. And Jenner may or may not have heard about this. But uh, since he kept really detailed records, uh, he's the one that pretty much gets credit for it. Man. Yeah, and the practice of inoculation has been going on for quite some time, uh, possibly for thousands of years, with taking dried smallpox blister material, and if you're in an area with an outbreak, rubbing that into you so you get a mild smallpox infection instead of a deadly hmm. one. Well, a usually mild infection instead of a usually deadly one. And this... Well, using pr- using uh, cowpox, I think, was the, the breakthrough there. Yes, Something that was. was infectious, but not deadly, generally. And did you know that to this day, it hasn't changed? I did not. At least so not still, drastically. If you're going to get a smallpox vaccine, it would be cowpox? It's still cowpox, and it's still coming from a cow. Nice. And... Yeah, you know, there there have been advances. You know, like they went to storing it in capillary tubes and using uh, glycerin to decrease the risk of of contamination. Uh, they did eventually go to not taking the lancet and pricking you and then everybody else with the same one and went to a little bit more single use instruments. Sure, because uh, in some of those early days of vaccination. <laughs> It was not unheard of for towns to get f- infected with one of their people's syphilis or gonorrhea <laughs> when they get vaccinated. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, and even though we have much better ways of doing vaccination now, mm-hmm. uh, there hasn't been, since smallpox was eradicated... You can't test it. Well, we do have a few uh, specimens left, but the only way to test those, or to use those to test it, would risk infecting the entire, you know, unleashing it back on the world. And so CDC staff that might be working in those areas where smallpox is stored are still getting sliced with a dirty cowpox, cow pus lancet. Yeah. Yeah. Well... Well, and Lance is not the right word. It's a, it's a bifurcated needle. A stabby needle. Stabby needle. Yeah, you make yeah. the cut, and the needle can hold a little bit of, of the uh, the pus, and mm. you get it in. So why not, well, why not an injection? That would be a new technique, and we wouldn't know the effectiveness of that or the risk of it. <laughs> okay. And since it's not an active uh, threat for yeah. really anybody... And there's only a handful of people that are still getting smallpox vaccination. It's the 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 need to produce that is small, hmm. and the ability to test the effectiveness is near as well is zero. So they basically they refined it, but it's basically still get cut and rub you know cowpox juice into your skin. Yep. Okay. In some cases, it might be coming from like a goat or sheep. Eh. Britain was using sheep. Uh, much of the world was using goats. Oh, oh, Britain had a whole bunch of farmers using sheep, I'm sure, for other uses, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. Hey, it's technically illegal to for a single man to own sheep in Idaho. <laughs> you say technically? Technically, yeah. I don't think it's enforced, but well, that's on the books. All right. Well, then it's not technical. I mean, that's real. <laughs> That is awesome, too. Yeah, which means uh, here soon I will be able to own sheep. Yay! <laughs> I don't plan on exercising that right, but... Well, yeah. not that. Not once you get married. I mean, why would you? Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's not like I want wool. <laughs> I know. Sheep stink. What the fuck? Yeah, and I prefer goat to mutton. <sighs> yeah, goat's pretty good. But, yeah. You know, kind of gamey, weird, but yeah, I don't, I don't like, I don't like sheep. I don't like lamb. Mm. Goat cooked right is good. Mm. 
Greek. So you need to get goat. Yeah, Greek uh, Indian restaurants that have goat tends to be quite good. Hmm. But like a good curried goat is, oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Anyway, uh, yeah. we've gotten way off topic. <laughs> so let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> All right. So that was May 14th, right? All right. Yes. And continuing this day in history, May 14th, 1973, uh, Skylab is launched. So Skylab was the first United States space station and second only to the uh, Russian station. Well, the Salyut uh, was plagued with problems from the beginning. Skylab was a great success, at least for the couple first couple of years. Uh, the station was in space for six years ish in total, but yeah, really only used for the first two. Uh, there was, I believe four different missions that went up there and, you know, they used the shit out of it for a while. Uh, apparently over 700 hours of, uh, living time on there. Uh, 175,000 pictures were taken, you know, they actually kind of work their asses off and yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, well, what else was really cool? Oh, um, they left the door unlocked for the next visitors, which they hope to be in a few years because they left the place dormant, but ready to be habit habitable again. Uh, cause they figured that the, um, uh, space shuttles would be in service in 1978 or so. Hmm. And they could actually go up there and, you know, actually bump the space station back further out into a, a higher orbit right. so they could get some more time out of it. Something that the space shuttle was actually get really good for. Unfortunately, the space shuttle uh, didn't make it out until the 80s. Yeah, and Skylab kind of came down a little earlier than planned. Yeah, it definitely did. Um, interesting tidbit. Um, well, most of the, the lab did burn up in space. Uh, some of it did drop into the Indian Ocean and Australia. And, uh, interesting side note, side note, Australia actually fined America $400 for littering. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> uh, nobody was hurt, nobody was injured, and supposedly no property damage occurred. But, yeah, littering. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Yeah, but one thing, yeah, you, you'd mentioned that it was only a few missions, wasn't used very long. Yeah. It they was exceeded, used hard while they, while they used it. They exceeded the plans. Yeah? Yeah. So, yeah, it wasn't intended to be long-term. It was just needed to be more long-term than Apollo. <laughs> it's time for a quick break, and then we'll be back with science and technology. Yay! We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. <laughs> First off, every galaxy has a halo of dust and metal particles around it. And scientists using the Hubble Space Telescope have found that Andromeda's halo is actually much bigger than previously estimated. In fact, it's about six times larger and 1,000 times more massive than the previous estimates. And this halo actually stretches half of the way to the Milky Way. Hmm. Man, uh, Master Chief's sphere of influence must be massive. <laughs> Please include that, even even if you yeah. don't get it. I, I get it. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Anyways, uh, man. So is that just like their Andromeda galaxy is a sphere of influence? That like dust that's actually kept in place by uh, the more like an atmosphere. Oh. Hmm. Which still isn't really an accurate description either, but a, a better analogy. Let's just say uh, scattered uh, gas particles. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Huh. 
that are radiating out from within the galaxy. All we got there. Or are orbiting around the galaxy. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, well, that's kind of cool. Speaking of galaxies, EGS-ZS8-1, that's a a beautifully named galaxy, if I, I, I must say, uh, it was originally identified based on its particular colors and images from NASA's Hubble and Spitzer Space Telescopes. It is one of the brightest and most massive objects in the early universe. Now, uh, using measurements taken from the W.M. Keck Observatory in Hawaii, it has become the most distant galaxy ever measured, dating back 13 billion years. And the galaxy itself is like 13.5, 13.7 billion, something. It's pretty that's... damn old. It's something that would have yeah. to already be a large galaxy for that era. Um, it'd been around for a little while. Shit. Yeah. This is, this is pushed back, uh, what we can actually see and, and really look at in the, the galaxy to earlier than we were getting any kind of valuable data out of you know we'd measured the background cosmic background radiation further back not galaxies well fuck and all this with fucking optical telescopes yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah imagine what we could do with the james webb space telescope or the lsst that's coming online in chile in like 2019 yeah Ooh. yeah and coming back to earth Mm-hmm. Keeping a bit almost science fiction-y, uh, Bart Anjan Bular, a paleontologist and developmental biologist from Yale, and Akat Abs Hoanov from Harvard led a team that reverted the beaks of chicken embryos to snouts. Nice. The beak is formed by two bones in the upper jaw that are otherwise quite small. In birds, they grow larger and they fuse together. Uh, they compared bones from dinosaurs, birds, alligators, turtles, and uh, other animals, then compared the genetic activity going on in emus, alligators, lizards, and turtle embryos, and they found two genes that control the middle face development that they suspected would control beak development. So what they did was they suppressed those proteins using some molecule- molecules they created, and they, yeah, suppressed the proteins produced by these genes. This left the chicken embryos with dinosaur snouts instead of beaks. Fuck yeah. Unfortunately, they didn't allow them to hatch, even though there is no reason they wouldn't have been able to. Uh, instead, they decided not to let them hatch because that's not what they were interested in. Um, it kind of should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take it to the next step. Just because the, the scope of your study is to see what the embryo, you know, embryonic development of the beak is. See what a chicken with a snout on it looks like and then eat it. All I'm going to say is that fucking Jurassic Park, the movies back in the 90s, you know, those really got a lot of people interested in science and, Mm -hmm. you know, dethroned the fucking T-Rex and then everybody fucking loved raptors and shit. But um, we got a new new, uh, Jurassic Park movie coming out in like, what, less than a month. Yeah. that You could have just like exploded your news everywhere dovetailed on this movie and you would have had money coming in from everywhere because fucking you could just hint at a, at a real Jurassic Park you know 30 years down the road mm-hmm. you know it, it is important to note that they didn't actually modify the genes directly and so they aren't at this time uh, demonstrating any ability to revert birds back to dinosaurs to the pre-avian days. Uh, but they're one step of the way there. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter what embryo you're looking at. If you go, like, in the really early stages of development, you can see, like, stuff kind of looks weird, and then it starts forming, and, and then, it, I mean, you can kind of see some of the developmental process of millions of years of mm-hmm. of genetics as <laughs> as babies grow. The beak in, in was the missing, womb. though, because it wasn't that it would form into a snout and then a, a beak. Uh, they had to do this to actually get those bones to form into a straight-on snout. Pretty fucking awesome. 
I know that they've uh, disabled genes before in the kind of the same way and made chickens uh, develop teeth. Mm hmm. So. Yeah. One, it, one thing that was interesting is those are different genes. Yeah. So you making them have both. a snout, it was a toothless snout. Sure. But if you do both genes at once, hopefully snout plus teeth. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Think about that chicken chasing after you. Now, one problem with that, uh, there is some speculation that the reason, you know, the evolutionary pressure for the beak would have been the grasping arms evolving into wings. And so the pe- the beak allows for better accessing and getting food. So if you create a chicken that loses that very central part of its, its digestive system, uh, that would kind of suck. Hmm. I'm sure somebody would take it home and, you know, feed it with the baby bottle. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, it's such a cute little chicken. <laughs> chicken sore. <laughs> chicken saurus. They had a big one. They could call it Chicken saurus Rex. <laughs> or would it be the Velocity Chicken? Uh huh. Yeah, think about that. Or uh, we could just move on. Yeah. <laughs> According to the Pan American Health Organization and World Health Organization, after a 15-year effort pushing the MMR vaccine, the Americas have officially eliminated rubella and is the first region in the world to do so. Fucking A. Yeah. It's kind of crazy that that we actually got that. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Especially (laughs) since, yeah, 15 years of actively pushing the MMR vaccine while for 14 years, the anti-vax movement has been pushing a link to autism that isn't there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yay! This is a big <laughs> one. And it's time for another break, and then we'll be back with politics and religion. As a listener of the show, I'm going to assume you love my sexy vocal stylings. If you love the rest of the show as much as my voice... Consider giving us the resources we desperately need to purchase quality cocaine or Red Bull. We make it super easy to make a one-time donation or to support us on a per-episode, monthly, or even annual basis using PayPal or Patreon. Find out more at AtheistNomads.com. Use the links on the right side of the page. A dollar an episode is all we ask. For the third time this year... An atheist blogger in Bangladesh has been brutally murdered. Ananta Bijoy Das was on his way to work when a group of four mass attackers pounced on him and hacked him to death with machetes. Motherfuckers. According to other writers, he was on a hit list from the same militants that recently killed Avijit Roy. (sighs) Yeah, he was just headed to work at a bank walking along on a crowded street in Bangladesh's fifth largest city and four masked men with machetes pounced on him. And nobody stopped him. Yeah. Well, yeah, once they were done killing him, uh, because they, they started with his head and then moved on to the rest of his body, yeah. and then they just disappeared into the crowd. Right. <laughs> I'm sure there's fucking blood spray everywhere. You know, that happens when you're swinging around a machete like a baseball bat. Yeah. Yeah. And so th- I'm sure it would not have been difficult to identify these people. I doubt any of them were wearing like Tyvek suits and then unzipped and walked away. Yes, they have masks. <laughs> Motherfuckers. Seriously, do you care that little about life? And all the people that were around didn't know that this dude was an atheist. Mm-hmm. <sighs> oh, he was even one of the most diplomatic out of all of the... Bangladeshi atheist bloggers. He rarely criticized religion directly. He mostly just focused on topics like the value of a secular government and liberty and science. Yeah, that's kind of criticizing religion pretty heavy. Yeah. You you don't want religion, you know, taking over your your science, your government. Okay, yeah, that's that's pretty much everything. <sighs> you know, Sure, Bangladesh, you know, they say they're officially a secular country, but uh, it seems more than 90% of its 160 million uh, people population are Muslims. <sighs> Not cool, Bangladesh. Nope. Yeah, hopefully the police are able to 
find the attackers and then actually do something about it. Because, yeah, this is this is bullshit. And if if you are a atheist in Bangladesh, um, I, I hope you you keep safe. Yeah, seriously. And no one Shut will think less of you up. if you get asylum somewhere. We will not think less of you if you just shut the fuck up. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. You know, we got a pretty fucking cushy over here compared to lots of other countries uh, that have that generally have a hot climate. Uh, be safe. What the fuck? Moving on to a funnier yet ridiculous story. Sticking with the Muslim world, Iran has banned spiky hair. The Iranian Barber Union is cracking down on popular, un-Islamic Western fashions. Per the head of the union, devil-worshipping hairstyles are now forbidden. Any shop that cuts hair in the devil-worshipping style will be harshly dealt with, and their license revoked. And yes, that devil-worshipping style he's talking about is jagged and spiky hair. Tanning beds and eyebrow plucking are also no longer allowed. All right, so one, you have to have a unibrow. Two... If you just go to sleep wrong and, you know, wake up and you have a really fucking bad case of bedhead, you can get into trouble. Well, okay. the the penalties are actually just on just the on the barbers? barber, it looks like. Because mm. this ruling is coming from the the barber's union, not from, from the government. Mm. I mean, unless you have a ponytail, it's... Uh, pretty difficult not to have spiky hair at some point. So, you're like, you know, that barber, he did this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Man, weird. What the fuck? Yeah. And, well, equally weird. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to Indonesia. <laughs> in North Ek, a district in the only Indonesian province that is allowed to practice Sharia law, they have started cracking down with rules that are going into effect next year. Uh, For two examples, boys and girls will have to be taught separately in school, and unmarried couples will not be able to share motorcycles or scooters. In the words of one of their politicians, Fuzan Hamza, unmarried people sitting closely together on a motorcycle is clearly against Islamic Sharia, as it could lead to sinful acts. We will make efforts so that deeds which can lead to sin are eliminated gradually, in North Ek District. Yeah, I could actually see that. Especially if the, the girl is on back. You know, the dude can start feeling her lady boner and, you know, he, he might become gay. <laughs> well, while she's got her, her arms around him, her hand could just slip a little. Sure, but lady boner. And if she's, you know, poorly educated in a, a separate but not equal school, then... Maybe she just think it's a joystick to control the scooter. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, the punishments for this are pretty weak. Those who break the law can be forced to apologize, attend religious sermons, or do community service. Oof. Man. I'll take the community service. Yeah. <laughs> uh, w- one concern with this is that if you're... Riding on a, a motorcycle, are you going to have to carry a marriage certificate along with the driver's license? I don't know. Do uh, Muslims uh, exchange rings? I don't know. Hmm. Like, you know, ring, that's good enough. But Indonesia and a lot of those uh, Asian area countries are, like, known for their scooters, aren't they? Like, mm-hmm. Little tiny roads sometimes, lots of traffic. Scooters are awesome because they... Don't use a lot of gas. Mm-hmm. Anyways, actually, shit, maybe this is just like a, a way to help uh, clean up the, t- the town. You know, they just have bunches of unmarried couples, you know, together on motorcycles and like, all right, community service, go clean up over there. Or maybe they're just trying to help keep women at home. Yeah. yeah. Barefoot, pregnant, and a burka. Mm, that's how I like them. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't like their women in a fucking potato sack? Yeah. All right. Moving to uh, some domestic stories. Pew released their latest religious landscape survey with 35,000 respondents, and the results are pretty astounding. 
Christianity is on the decline. In mm. 2007, 78.4 percent of Americans identified as Christian. In 2014, that number was down to 70.6 percent, a decline of nearly 8 percent. Hot damn. The unaffiliated, people who identified as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular, has risen 6.6 percent from 16.1 percent to 22.8 percent. God damn. This means the nuns now outnumber Catholics who are down to 20.8 percent. Yeah. Also of note, atheist identification has almost doubled, rising from 1.6 percent to 3.1 percent. This puts us larger than any non-Christian faith and with almost twice the numbers as the Mormons have. Gotta love it. That's all I'm going to mm-hmm. say. So now yeah, we're like two points above Catholics and about three points below ev- ev- evangelical Protestants. Yeah. At the rate this is going, Another the unaffiliated years. will be the biggest religious segment. <laughs> Give it another 10 years. Yeah. Now, even just Protestant Christianity as a whole is down under 50%. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's it's looking up. Now, of course, there was another survey recently looking at the world and doing projections for 2070, and it predicts our numbers to decline and Islam to pass up Christianity. Lovely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, uh, this is so much a time for a reformation. Or birth control. Oh. Well, I think the government, the United States government is already working on that. You know, chemtrails, finger birth controls are already in that. We need those chemtrails in the Islamic world then. Ah. Because mm. <laughs> obviously that's that's how you give people the appropriate doses of, of hormones to do that kind of stuff. Uh, it's actually in all of the the chemtrails that are coming off of the military jets that are over there, you know, flying oh, operations. That's how, yeah. But those chemtrails actually have the gay built in. Oh, them. okay. Well, so, we've got some good news on on that though. In a poll conducted for MSNBC and the Wall Street Journal, sixty one percent said they would be enthusiastic or comfortable with a hypothetical LGBT presidential candidate. Nice. Only 52% felt the same about an evangelical candidate. And a hypothetical leader of the Tea Party movement did even worse at only 33%. Um, I'm scared to ask about the atheist, but... (laughs) I didn't see that. It could have been in there. I didn't dig that deep into the story. No, I didn't see anything about that either. But still, yay. Well, okay, I just pulled up the actual survey, so I will search for atheist. Hmm. They did not ask about atheist. Well, after that whole atheist rapist thing from a couple years ago. Yeah. Well, that, (laughs) I should clarify, that whole uh, where atheists are trusted less than rapist thing from a couple years ago. (laughs) Not saying atheist rapist. Hopefully with the number of, the, the doubling of the number of people identifying as atheists that will soon turn that around. I'm I'm pretty confident that is changing. Yeah, just got to wait for that Fox viewership to die off. <laughs> <laughs> and actually the whole rest of this is all good news. Yay. So, yeah, domestic good news. It's awesome. The US Supreme Court let a lower court ruling that New Jersey's ban on gay conversion therapy of minors is not unconstitutional. This is the second time that they have refused appeals on this issue. The last one was just last year for California's ban. So let's just say that uh, in a positive fashion one time, New Jersey has a ban on gay uh, gay conversion therapy, and it is still a ban. Yes. Yes. For minors. Yes. Adults can consent to bullshit. Well, minors sure. are not capable of consenting to bullshit. <laughs> And Sorry, also, yeah, you know, I, 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 uh, double negatives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not, yeah, not so, what? What? It's not, not what? I'm like, uh, I'm not know. un. <laughs> okay. I could have said it is constitutional, but oh well. <laughs> 
for an update, after getting letters from the from Americans United and t- talking it over with their lawyer again, the town of Cochrane, Georgia, went ahead and took the Christian flag they had flying over City Hall down. Oh, what? We don't live in a Christian nation? Nope. <laughs> we live in a nation whose population is 70% Christian. Oh, that actually, is, that seems to be lower now, but yeah. Yeah, only 70% of the population. <laughs> Oh, yeah, boy. soon Christianity will not even be a super majority. Oh, so yeah, Americans United for Separation of Church and State uh, sent out just a little a little note, and that apparently did the trick. <laughs> well, the note probably said something like, take it down or we will sue, oh. and you will lose because you are horribly wrong. Their fucking attorney knew that shit. Like, yeah. Uh, I don't want to be associated with you guys. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And for our final story, Ben Carson is running for president. Yeah. We need, we need an idiot. We need a new Santorum. Thank you very much, Ben Carson. Oh, Huckabee's also running as well. Oh, yeah. So we've got two complete wannabe theocrats running for president. Sure. And yeah, you know, we we have we have standards on this show about the the type of people we will mock and deride relentlessly. Generally, you need to be in a public position, you know, sure. a a pastor or politician or running for fucking president. Oh yeah, you got a big ass target on your back uh-huh. for uh, for our derision, not for guns of any sort. Crazy retired neurosurgeon. Says stupid things, big deal. Crazy retired sur- neurosurgeon says something to big groups. It might be worth ent- uh, talking about. Crazy retired neurosurgeon running for president. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, even if he wasn't running for president, we'd still talk about, about him a bit, especially when he's on Fox. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's not just him. Uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. This guy's homophobia is legendary, though. Love it. Oh, uh, did you know that uh, Huckabee used to uh, foist uh, can- uh, cancer cures? Yes, I did hear about that. Yeah, weird. Yeah. Huh. And diabetes. Uh, apparently, he said through pill, well, through proper diet and exercise and these pills supplements he got cured of his type 2 diabetes because big pharma doesn't want you to know about it yeah i'm sure he would say that big pharma is just fine if they give him campaign contributions uh supposedly he's he's not too on the the up and up with the big pharma companies oh. giving him money really yeah I'm, I'm using young turks as my uh source for that okay huh all righty. Well, we've got some feedback to go through. All right. First off, we've got Alex via email. Hey, guys. Longtime fan here. Quick PSA on the e-cigarettes. Not sure if this has been mentioned before. Sorry if it has been. Although no nicotine might be the best choice in the real world, I w- would certainly choose e-cigarettes over regular cigarettes. There is always a need for more evidence, but you have to make decisions now with the evidence we have, and nicotine is clearly and by far not the biggest evil in tobacco. That being said, there is one very real danger of e-cigarettes, the nicotine refill solutions. They are dangerous because they are highly concentrated and a large dose can very easily be ingested by a child or pet, especially if they are scented and come in in fun-looking packaging. The concentration of nicotine in those can be up to 100 milligrams per milliliter. The lethal dose of nicotine is uncertain, but estimates to be 1 milligram per kilogram and LD50 and dog studies have been reported to be in the 6 to 13 milligram per kilogram range. So keep it away from kids and other curious creatures. That's all. Keep up the great work. XOXOXOXO. Alex, P.S. I'm an emergency room doctor. Kids getting their sticky little hands into things that can kill them is a bit of a pet peeve of mine. So I actually, this is part of my reply to her. Oh, okay. And I, I told her, I pretty much totally agree with you. But uh, I think you're confusing flavored e-juice that people actually vape 
uh, which I've never seen above 24 milligrams, but more usually vaped at about the 6 milligram level. And the unflavored nicotine solution that people add to their VGMPG and flavor to make their own e-juice. Um, yeah, 100 milligram per milliliter is only in concentrates. You get that with either pure PG or pure VG, typically is PG, and it is not vapable. Yeah, no, yeah. At all. Not, not until mixed in due to, my, to a minute uh, dilution. And uh, if that, at that concentration, if you get it on your skin, it will be very bad. And that was actually what I was just getting to. Oh. Um, <laughs> that being said, I totally agree with the nicotine solution that it can be dangerous. And I suggest using gloves when adding the nicotine to your e-juice. As for uh, kids getting into any poison, that's a horrible thing. Yeah. You know, I, I have, uh, I don't have any 100 milligram right now. I do have some 60 milligram concentrate. And that, with the rest of my mixing supplies, is up in a cabinet that the dogs can't get to. If I had kids that could get up to that cabinet, it would be locked. I've got a little uh, little dark locked box, and I do actually have 100 milligram uh, Nick juice. And, yeah, I, I dilute the shit out of it. Yeah. Oh, and Wesley, I do have to correct you on one thing. Six mm. milligram is very common for dripping. Yeah. For everybody else i.e. the vast majority of vapors, 18 to, or 12 and 18 are the most common. All right. Like, I vape 18 in most tanks. My sub-tank, I vape 12, and in my drippers, 3 or 6. All right. And I used to vape 24. You used to be able to find 36, but... Uh, yeah, Mountain Baker Vapor still has 36. Yeah, it's really not common, and especially since wattage and airflow and everything is up so much... Uh, you don't want that much, but yeah, the, the, the PSA here. Yeah. If you have, uh, kids and pets, be careful. Uh, don't buy juice from companies that sell bottles that don't have child safety caps. Those are bad people. <laughs> so do not buy from them. Uh, don't support them with your money send, and send them a letter saying why you are not supporting them because yeah, the risk of a kid getting a hold of that. Uh, you know, I, I have had e-juice in my mouth, uh, splashback, and it is fucking nasty. So the likelihood of a kid actually drinking much of it, especially if it's a higher concentration of nicotine, would be very slim. But yeah. be going from being curious to accidentally chugging a milliliter is not too hard. Uh, <laughs> and dogs getting into them, I think, is probably a bigger risk. So make sure you keep them away from your pets. That being said, I've whipped up a amazing batch of raspberry creme de menthe. Mm. It tastes really good. Nice, nice. We we have more feedback. Uh, the rest of it's on the National Day of Reason uh, from the, the video and audio I got up, and I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, first off, from Virginia Dawn via, via Facebook. That was really nice, and I thought the audio was much better than outdoor recording has any right to sound to. It was just as clear as could be. Yay. Thank you. And from Randy Lamonda on Twitter, that's at Randy Lamonda, at Atheist Nomads, loved Richard Carey's Sharia, uh, Sharia Law speech for the Idaho National Day of Reason. Yeah, that was that was good. Uh, and I actually had to do extra cleaning up on his because the rain was getting harder by then. <laughs> Apparently Thor was unpleased by the Sharia going on in our, in our country. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, if you want to get a hold of us, you can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com. You can call us at 541-203-0666. You can hit us up on Twitter at Atheist Nomads or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. I want to give a big shout out to our new supporters. We got Alex uh, of, you know, our EG's fame just a minute ago and Mike Price. Thank you so much. And I actually had to check on Mike Price because there's a lot of prices around where I live. Uh, hmm. Lauren's, a bunch of Lauren's family is, has the last name of Price. And I had an employee a few years back whose name was Mike Price. And no, no, he is not from Idaho or Utah. He's from the UK. So. Fucking A. Thank you, Mike from the UK. Yeah. Man, that must be like $2 for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> And I also want to remind all of you about our 100 by 100 campaign. That is to get up to $100 per episode by episode 100. 
That's only six weeks away. Bum, bum, bum. I, I recalculated the, the amount. Uh, we're up to $35 on Patreon, and I went ahead and calculated out what the PayPal donations would average out to, assuming four episodes in a month. And so we're at $47 an episode. Holy shit. Yeah, it's not too shabby. Uh, the number jumped up quite a bit. And uh, yeah, this is thanks to, to Alex and Mike, as well as, you know, obviously me adding PayPal in. And I am quite thrilled about this, but I think we are worth more than $47 an episode since, or hence the $100 goal. Uh, but so, thanks to the beauty of crowdfunding, all we ask is for $1 an episode. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, all this, uh, these sex toys that I buy off of Amazon using our click through help also. I'm just hoping they usually almost cover the uh, Libsyn hosting cost. Nice. <laughs> you know, I, I donate to our show every chance I get. Cool. Yeah. Well, I encourage everybody to use our Amazon <laughs> click through for all their sex toy needs and other stuff. Yeah, I'm sure. sure Amazon, I'm believe it or not, Amazon has stuff other than just sex toys. Say it ain't so, man. Say it ain't so. All kinds of electronics and computers. and That's where I bought all my uh, individually wrapped uh, sterile pipettes that I use for my e-juice mixing. Hmm. <laughs> all righty. Well, thank you all for listening. And uh, thank you, Wesley. And we will be back at you next week with an interview. Yay. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find us online at www.atheistnomads.com. Contact us at contact at atheistnomads.com or leave us a voicemail message at 541-203-0666. You can also like us on Facebook or leave us a review on iTunes, Zoom, or wherever else you find the podcast. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads. You clean still there? there? Are you clean there? Yeah. Wesley. Could work. Hello? Uh, you can cut that. <laughs> better than the United States where they you know, just tax the poor. By, you know, handing out tickets and the pe- people can't pay. Um, are you still there? Dustin, I think Skype's fucking up.